Google Woman of the Week is Gwen Eiffel. Gwen Eiffel ain't no joke. She's a senior correspondent on Jim Lehrer's show. She has a PBS show called The Washington Week in Review. She serves on the board of directors for mad, dope, huge, Harvard mess. But you probably became familiar with her because she was the moderator for the vice presidential debate. And let me tell you, she got under some heat prior to that position. She has a book coming out called Breakthrough, Politics and Race in the Age of Obama. Well, folks are trying to say that this book is pro-Obama and so she is biased and she would not be able to be a good moderator for the vice presidential debate and that she would be more inclined to give Senator Palin the real tough questions in the debate. Um, you don't have to give Palin tough questions. She said taliban -y in the debate. Gwen Eiffel is our Super Bowl of the Week because she was like, hold up. I'm not even finished with the book, so I find it interesting that people already know what it's about since I haven't even completed the writing of the book. When I'm done with the book, you can have your opinion. Until then, I'm gonna hit both of them with hard-hitting questions, and that's exactly what she did. And you know what? That's some super shit. Shutting folks down when they get too reckless with their mouth. You know the bottom line was, hey, she black, he black, you know what that means. Uh-uh. Gwen Eiffel has earned her place, and she is a superwoman on some super shit. Don't mess with her. Big up, say we're big enough, say we're big up, say we're big enough, say let down, say we let down, say let down, say we let down. I need to take a moment to prepare for this big up. While I'm taking a moment, I want you to check out why this person, Richard Trumka, the treasurer of the AFL CIO, gets the big up this week. There's not a single good reason for any worker especially any union member, to vote against Barack Obama. And there's only one really, really bad reason to vote against Barack Obama. And that's because he's not white. And that's because he's not white. He's not white. OMFG! I want to talk about that issue. Now, I don't think that we ought to be out there pointing fingers and calling them racist. Instead, we need to educate them. Only one candidate who's going to stand up for their families. Only one candidate who has earned their vote. And that candidate is Barack Obama. And come November, he's going to be the president of the United States. Okay. Every now and again, like Dave Chappelle said, something happens where you're just like, wow, like it's so racist that you can't even be like, I'm offended. Cause you're just amazed at how racist it is. But less often than that, something happens that makes you go, damn, that was unifying. That was so anti-divisive. That was just good. And come November, he's gonna be the president of the United States. Richard Trumka, who looks like your average seventh grade science teacher, looks like he could possibly not like black people, has completely just shut down the whole judge a book by its cover thing. He's actually the treasurer of the AFL-CIO, which is the largest conglomerate of American trade unions. And the reality is that he is in a place where he can speak to a huge number of people. These are the folks that are working in the red states. These are the folks that are questionable on whether or not they think Obama could be president simply because he's black. And he didn't mince any words in addressing that plain and simple fact. And that's because he's not white. As we get closer to this election, everybody is talking about it, everybody's involved in it, and Diva Speak TV has, of course, been at this from Jump Street. Last week, our big up was to Joel Santana and the Dipset crew, because it showed that change was afoot. Well, this week, we take it up another notch. When we see a regular white dude speaking in passionate defense for not only a black man, but for change for everybody. You know, he's not speaking in the sense of, this would be good for white people, so don't be scared of black people. He's saying, this would be good for the people. This would be good for the workers of the United States. And if you saw Palin in the vice presidential debate, she's talking about, John McCain has been a maverick for the workers of America, and darn tootin', we're gonna do what we've gotta do to really just get things on the right foot. Yo, don't Palin talk like the mother from Bobby's world? Sure enough, don't you know? About time. In striking contrast, we will move on to one of the most embarrassing black people, like, <laughs> ever. OJ! This nigga is unbelievable. This nigga killed two people and got off. You ain't supposed to do nothing wrong.
song again in your life. Someone gives you an extra dime and change, you give that shit back. You don't tear the tag off a mattress. I mean, you got to be a stupid motherfucker to get involved in this setup. It was essentially like, all right, guys, this is what we're going to do. We're going to steal his shit, and then we're going to call him. I'm beginning to think maybe he just wanted to go to jail. I mean, there isn't going to be another Naked Gun sequel, so what else is OJ going to do? No one knows what his sentence is, we're waiting on it, but the conviction did come in. OJ has been found guilty for kidnapping, and they're saying that he could possibly get life. So this is basically like the Oscars, where they gave Denzel his Oscar for training day when he should have gotten it for Hurricane. They're basically giving OJ his sentencing for this bullshit, because they should have given him life, maybe the death penalty, when he murked Nicole Brown and Ron Goldman. I know Kato is somewhere like, ha! They finally got him. Remember Kato? He is the poster boy for the stop snitching movement. This motherfucker was in the guest house and said, I ain't here to shit. What's poppin' y'all? This is Tokyo Ko, and what's poppin' this week in pop culture are tell And they ain't biting their tongues. First, it was popped off by Super Hags. Then Carmen Bryant, who was not his baby mom, popped it off. Then it was Kim Osorio, former editor-in-chief of The Source magazine, and recently, R&B singer Faith Evans released a book. And I mean, my girl is about 10 years too late, to be honest. Now, Antonia Carter, for those who don't know, is the ex-wife of rapper Lil Wayne. She's also his baby mama. <laughs> It's no coincidence that she's releasing this book at the peak of Weezy's career. My question to you all is, are tell all books for closure anymore or is it just a new trend that pays? Leave a comment. So this weekend, I was at the Hip Hop Cultural Center in New York and I got honored as a hip hop scholar. So an honorary big up goes to the Hip Hop Cultural Center of New York who this weekend honored women in hip hop. And I actually got an award, a Hip Hop Scholar Award. Ooh. Some of the other women honored were MC Light, Eve, Shah Rock, Roxanne Shante, and we actually got some time with MC Light, and I had a very important question to ask her. Can we get the female rap category back at the Grammy? I believe we can. who wants to get your music heard, make sure you send us your three best tracks to divasbtv at gmail.com. Now, no, we are not paying folks because this is not that kind of party. It'll be used to add flavor to the show. So make sure you hit us up, divasbtv at gmail.com. <laughs>